In this lesson, you'll learn about different types of Android app components. These components are part of making more complex Android applications. As shown in this graphic, there are four types of components. Activities, content providers, broadcast receivers, and services. Each type of component has its own entry point for execution, purpose for being, and life cycle pattern of creation, execution, and termination. And we'll be looking at each of these in detail in coming lessons. For now, I'd like you to have an overview understanding of them and the roles they play. Activities you've already worked with in our first app. An activity is Java application code associated with a user display screen. In our first app, it displays our hello text. As indicated by the smiley face, the main purpose of activities is to keep the user happy. This might mean displaying information, images, audio, video, whatever it takes. The purpose of content providers is to deal with data. It's a way for one app to supply other apps with information. The purpose of broadcast receivers is to respond to events. For example, a broadcast receiver might be triggered by a low battery condition. And services operate in the background to do things like periodic backups. Let's look back at our first app. It had one component, a main activity, that used image and XML resources to display a single screen. It didn't contain content providers, services, or broadcast receivers. Let's say we wanted to include other component types. Let's look at these components in more detail. We know about our activity that displays the user interface screen, keeping our user happy. It's upfront and visible. Content providers play a supporting role managing data. A good example is the contacts manager that maintains our Android address book. Broadcast receivers work further in the background responding to events. They can create status bar notifications but don't have a user interface like activities. They typically perform only short operations. An example might be detecting when a contact sends a message and displaying an icon in the status bar. Services work in the deep background and can operate for longer periods of time than broadcast receivers. An example might be performing automatic data backup for our contact information at certain time intervals. Our first app consists of a simple, single activity component. As we add more components and types of components, our apps will obviously become more complex. Another way to view this complexity is looking at the number of Android APIs. There are about 150 APIs in the Android system, and each of these contains multiple classes that in turn contain multiple methods. That means that there are thousands of different methods to choose from. The more of these that are used, the more complex the app will become. And add to that the limitless options for structuring code to use these methods, and you get an idea of the challenge in developing more complex Android apps. During the course, we'll be using the app development methodology we previously discussed to help us deal with this complexity. Uh, here's the reason I bring up the issue of complexity. It's not to scare you. It's to point out that we'll need these tools and methodologies to deal with the complexity and the magnitude of Android. Don't get discouraged. I know it can be intimidating. We'll take it a step at a time and build our knowledge and skills. So that's an overview of the four types of Android components and the roles they play. And as I said, we'll be looking at each of them in detail in coming lessons.